Right, everything's getting recorded now. Um, yes, good morning, Joseph. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah, we're all sitting. Yoda dude has just said we're waiting, yet we know what she's going to say. This is true, we do. And it'll all happen in that monitor over there, as and when it comes up. Um, at the moment, nothing's going on. There is a, a press conference happening in um, the same room on Iran. And if you see me looking in that direction, I'm looking at chat, even though I've got it open twice. What can I tell you? As per usual, I have Chris in another monitor. Whoops, not that one. Not that one. That one. There you go. That's what I'm looking at down here. It's all good. Where was I? Oh, yes. Back to that. Finger trouble. Oh. Far too early in the morning. That was me flicking through all the cameras, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Yes. All good. Thankfully, I'm flicking through. It's just I've got too many things to look at here this morning. Um, and none of them pretty. I didn't say that. <laughs> As if I would. As if I would. So we are just we're just waiting for uh, for that monitor there over my shoulder to burst into life and show some signs of life and then we'll uh, we'll flick across to Ms. McAvan with her execrable statement. Um, Yoda 1970 says, "Is one ready for McAvan, DD? One is girded. One's loins are girded. One's armour is on." One's calmness quotient is at an all-time high. Um, no, I don't think 21 up was saying, well, they cut it off at the vinegar stroke again like yesterday. No, no, this is a press conference. And I don't think there's one scheduled for after this one. There's one scheduled for before, about Iran. Paul XB8, I have absolutely no intention of reading out what you have just typed into chat. You're not parking your bike anywhere. If I can manage, oh no, I will have to stand up. Unless I find the mouse now. <clears throat> See, managed that without butt crack. Not used to that. I know, it's, I know it's, it's unusual. You don't have to tell me. Leo O'Donnell said, surely this cannot be the end. This is just the beginning, bunny lad. Pardon me. Does a stomach stone somersaults? Yeah, Joseph, I would ask the darling Linda to wait, but she's taken no bloody notice of anything else we've said. Why do you think she would accede to that? You didn't miss anything, Lorian. Loads of people. Yes, all interesting. Tonight's show will be interesting. We still haven't seen full text. Strangely, our usual sources have dried up. The way we've got to think of this is we, we won the last battle. She's won this one, but the war isn't over yet. Far from it. At the moment, it's a score draw.
Mark, no, there's a, there's a, there is a, another press conference happening um, in the same room, just not on the same stream. You may hear the, the, the odd yell from my grandson, who is with us at the moment. Orange liquid, Lena Marie, Pop Torsen. Orange liquid, ooh. Oh, you have a glass of orange in the morning to bake it up, so. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I must admit, I've tried orange juice and it's absolutely gorgeous. Really? Tangy and warm. Okay. Very nice. See, so this is morning. This is breakfast. This is the second, second um, course of breakfast. You can tell it's too early. Mark Shaw's. Chili and aniseed. Good lord. How did you get your Guinness to look hard? Yeah, no, it's not Guinness, Bonnie lad. This is coffee. Come offy. It's mega. It's what we do. And the lemon, but isn't isn't this isn't this the nation that does um, rotten shark and <laughs> buried herring and stuff like that? Oh, that was Sweden, wasn't it? And he's from uh, Norway. Yes, I don't know. I mean, Nordic countries. <laughs> ah, gravid lax, gravid salmon. I love gravid lax. It's gorgeous. Good morning from Spain, Mad Vapor. Hola. Get down. <laughs> yes, fiddles, Macaban bringing out new e liquid, pure bullshit. Like that. Indeed. Old Git's doing his usual early morning. <laughs> yeah, orange vape counts as one of your five a day. I'm absolutely sure it does, yeah. <laughs> and I've got apple. So there you go. Add one of my five. Think of all the roughage. Absolutely. Well, if they're running a time, the stream should go up in a couple of minutes because you know what they're like. Thirty seconds before it's all due to kick off. and pear. That could be nice. Mm -hmm. Does tea count as a vegetable or a fruit? <laughs> oh, it's got fire and ice with custard mixed in. In the, oh, in the scrape? Seriously? Good lord. Buongiorno Rolando Antoniol E. Hello from Italy, he says. Buongiorno. Italian cheese. I'm not surprised you're not brave enough to try. Oh, Italian cheese is gorgeous. Gingerbread and chocolate, that might be okay. Steffi's just said, Sana Bon Bon here, what's the English word? Steffi, you know I don't speak German. Cream Bon Bon. Somebody's bound to a German scotch. Beer scotch. Oh, that would be nice. Oh, 
I can't work a PC, I've discovered. But it should just come up. No, still nothing. <coughs> yes, Kronos, more of the train wreck. Should be coming up now, I think. I think it's coming up, Chris. And there it is, we have it uh, live. Okay, I'll run it over to uh, the full screen of that, I think. Bonjour à tous. Merci. Good morning. Thank you for coming along to Linda McCaffin's press conference, Parliament's rapporteur on the Tobacco Products Directive, which is subject to agreement with Council. Now, as Council, as Coripa, will be meeting that this morning to discuss some text elements that still need a going through in council so i'll give the floor to rapporteur straight away to cover any points you may have i'm going to speak in english but i do speak french if there are some questions in french that people want to put um so good morning everybody um welcome to this press conference um it's exactly one year to the day since the commission of board published the tobacco products directive those of you who followed the story from the beginning no, it had a long and difficult birth to come out of the Commission. And then in the Parliament as well, it was also controversial, to say the least. 
We've had leaked documents, we've had delays, we've had lots of lobbying, and um, I'm very pleased that finally this morning the COEPA agreed the compromise which we came to on Monday night in the trilogue. Um, and I'm very, very pleased that in the end, 27 member states have supported the outcome of the trilogue, only one country being against. This is a, a much bigger majority than there was in, when we had the, um, when the Irish presidency, who did a fantastic job, so congratulations to the Irish presidency, who got the first um, outline agreement in June in the Council. Um, and so I think it's a sign that Europe takes very seriously tobacco control. Just to remind people the big things that we've achieved, what does it mean? It means that from now on, on, tobacco, on cigarette packages, 65% warnings on the packages. The branding at the top of a package, so the branding goes to the bottom of the package, and the majority of a package all across the European Union will be picture graphic warnings on tobacco. Flavoured cigarettes, strawberry, chocolate, the ones used to attract young people will disappear from the market. And people know there's been a discussion about menthol. And menthol will be phased out, compromised between Council and Parliament by 2020. In 2020, menthol will be phased out. So we see the other big change is that I, mean, I would have liked that we totally banned slim cigarettes that didn't get a majority in Parliament or in Council. But we have. Take, we will take off the market the lipstick packages, the perfume packages, which are designed specifically targeting young women to get them to become smokers. Because of, the key thing about this directive, of course, is that um, we have to stop a new generation of smokers from being recruited. If you think back to the first reports on when in the 1960s, I think it was about 51 years ago, when doctors first linked smoking with lung cancer. In my country, 70% of adult men smoked and nearly 50% of women. We've now gone down to 28% across the EU of adults smoking, higher in some countries, lower in others. Um, but we've seen a worrying trend, a rise in the number of young smokers. We can't allow the EU to become a place of young smokers and we always will forget as well that on tobacco control the EU has not been the world leader on tobacco control countries like Brazil are actually the world leaders the United States has fewer smokers than we do and now the whole of the EU is going to play catch up and I'm very grateful to um, the Lithuanian presidency to Minister Andrew Kaitis for his work for the, the chair of our working party from the council did a brilliant job getting agreement in the council to our commission Commissioner Borge and the commission officials and of course to staff of the European Parliament to em Emilia Romano who, I just, who did a tremendous work I can see Ulrika Schoen here and, and Kiri Hanks my, my researcher as well as the staff of all the MEPs who worked very hard on this agreement um, the other big controversial issue which was dominated the last few days was the whole discussion around e-cigarettes, what should happen to e-cigarettes. The original Commission proposal was that e-cigarettes should, in effect, be classified as medicines. Um, Parliament voted against that. Parliament said that e-cigarettes should be regulated as tobacco products, and that is the final outcome we've got today. So the discussion was never about banning e-cigarettes as being reported all too often in the media. Nobody was ever going to ban e-cigarettes. That was not the discussion. The discussion was simply how to regulate e-cigarettes. And the result of the trilogue is that e-cigarettes will be regulated as a tobacco product. Why is that important for Parliament? Because it, many MEPs, one of the main objections to the farmer route for e-cigarettes was that they would not be widely available to people who wanted to quit smoking in some member states. In my member state, you can buy a paracetamol, a pharma product, almost anywhere, supermarkets, garages, everywhere. Um, in Belgium, not the case. In France, not the case. And so MEPs wanted e-cigarettes to be as available as cigarettes for people who smoke. Um, but we also didn't want e-cigarettes to become a gateway for young people to smoke. And um, we have, therefore, provisions in the new law um, which will 
regulate e-cigarettes. If they're tobacco products, regulated as tobacco products, they will have the same restrictions as cigarettes, i.e. not to be marketed at young people, not to be marketed, ban on advertising, etc. However, just one clarification, I keep getting asked this by journalists, there is a provision in the law that an e-cigarette company could choose to be a pharma product. If an e-cigarette company wants to make a quick claim on a product, wants to, um, in some countries, be recommended by doctors, then they could still apply for a medicines license and be a pharma product, in which case they're subject to pharma rules. So there are two routes to, be, to put an e-cigarette on the market and in the future. But this, this is exactly what the European Parliament voted when we voted in October. So those are the main provisions. There's lots of other details, but maybe you can see what colleagues want to talk about. Merci. Y a-t-il des questions? Thank you. Can I ask if there are any questions? No, it's all no. crystal clear for everybody. Everybody understands everything. You've also, I mean, we have issued a press release, and so um, people can read the press release, which has the details. The council text will be available as from uh, the end of this week the final outcome. And of course, it still has to go to a vote in the plenary. And we expect the vote in the plenary February or March. We have to depend on there's a period when the text has to be signed off by the loyal linguists. And at some point in the next few months, we'll have the, um, the vote in Parliament to finally put this law. Because of course, the Parliament also, my priority was to make this law before the European election elections, which is also very important. Merci. Thank you. Still no questions. If everything's clear, then thank you for coming. Sorry about that. If everybody's been deafened, I forgot to press the little button. That's it. They are finished. Um, and as you saw, uh, it looks as though it'll go to plenary in... February or March. We don't know which, but that gives us time to do the lobbying that we need. Um, yes, the, the, I think there's a, there's a lot to be looked at, um, and I'll be going into... That just Sorry about that, if everybody's being deaf, I forgot to press the little button. That's it. They are finished. Um, Is that you, Chris? Right, yes, where was I? Uh, to... to I'm going to take a look at this tonight um, because I've seen texts from uh, both the Greens and uh, Chris Davies that says that there's still the potential for these things to be regulated as medicines, not by choice but by function, so it could be forced and I need to find out more about that. And as you heard Mrs McEvan say, uh, the full texts will be available by the end of the week. Um, we're not going to know really exactly where we're at until we've got the full texts. Um, so tonight we'll be talking about this at a great deal of length and uh, during the course of the day no doubt people will be uh, discussing what needs to be done, what we want to see occur. Um, it would appear on the face of it that there is support for what has been announced today in certain quarters of the European Parliament. We would expect the S&D group to carry that. I'm not sure EPP will go down that route. Aldi, it would appear, is likely to be split. Uh, ECR, the Conservatives, I think will not be supporting it, but we'll know more a little bit later on. Chris, is there anything else I need to cover? No, I think you've covered it all, Dave. Um, Rachel Coffey has asked, do they have any more opportunity to amend the text further, or is this the end of the week's text, the final, final text? Right. What comes out is what will go, what, what will be out by the end of the week, is what will go to the European Parliament to become um, a legislative resolution. It can be amended within the European Parliament, but I'll fill you in more on that tonight. Um, there's an email Dave needs to read, right, hang on. Have I got it now? Where is it? All right. This is from Viscount Ridley. Is that the one you're on about, Lorian? Type it into chat, please. The email from Viscount Ridley. Yes, she says. 
Okay. Um, this is quite long. Uh, right. Yes. Thank you for that, Lorian. I will be. I'll cover that tonight. Obviously, I've only just seen it. There's a lot. Oh God. Yes, it's good. Yes, it's very good. And there is video of it as well. I'll pull all that together and we'll play that in tonight as well. Um, it may be a slightly extended show. Is that all right with you, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got all that. Thanks for that, Lorian. This is this is the team is huge. There are so many people working on this. This is fabulous. Um, I'm not happy about what I've just seen. I'm not happy about what's going on at the moment. I can't really get my head around it. Let's see where we're at tonight. Uh, if there's anything else in chat. Nine o'clock tonight, Mad Vapor. Nine o'clock tonight, we will be Someone live. Someone was asking about jury. Do jury need to review, review this, this text? Um, it will go for what's called, uh, it, it has to go through the technical um, side of things. Uh, where are we at? The, the, there are there are the, there are technicalities to it all, and the legal departments obviously need to look through all of this and make sure that the wording's right and all of that kind of thing to try and. and there's a, an awful lot will go on in Europe before uh, plenary before the European Parliament actually sits down and tries to make it a legislative resolution. Um, there's a lot of information that they need patently because they don't have the right information um, and I'm, I'm going to try and pull everything together and let everybody know where everything's at tonight um, it'll be an interesting show uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to have a bit better handle on what's going on um, it's all very very much, well it's not up in the air I mean the decision has been made, Corep has endorsed it, so Council and the negotiating body has agreed. It's now down to the European Parliament to decide whether or not it agrees and it may well possibly go to a second reading. But we'll cover this all tonight. For the time being then, I think we'll uh, draw this to a close because I've got a lot of thinking to do, a lot of reading to do, a lot of video to find. And tonight at nine o'clock we'll discuss this in great depth, as much depth as I can possibly muster thank you all for tuning in to watch what was the smuggest press conference i've seen in an awful long time um and we'll see you later on tonight for the time being uh, from all of us here take care vape on vape hard and nil carborundum illegitimate see you later <laughs>